is your time to get started. Hello. <laughs> Happy Sunday. Okay, so what are we doing today? Uh, probably a couple of different things. Uh, I'm not completely sure. Let's see. What's on the, uh, the backlog? So what's... I opened this pull request two weeks ago to check out Figment, which is a, uh, a Rust crate for configuration stuff. And that looks pretty good, um, pretty interesting. We might carry that through with the project board. And then we have our Twitch uh, chatbot thing that I was working on back in March. I should circle back to that at some point. It's, it's probably about time. Um, See what else is on the board. So, um, I think the past several streams, I have been working on chained tasks. So being able to um, do a thing, and then once that thing is done, do another thing. That's kind of like a <laughs> uh, like a promise chain, but with Redis and uh, microservices. APIs. So uh, we got that working. I think, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the end of last stream, uh, the issue was that the it didn't seem to be working still, even though we, we made changes. And the reason for that was, can I hide um, shortcuts? Uh, I'm, I'm back to using Workflowy, which is a tool that I used uh, a number of years ago. And uh, I like it. And, uh, the reason I'm over here is because uh, one of the, the, the last problem that I had was not a, an issue with. So what we were, what were you doing last time to kind of recap? Um, so we, we have this um, chained tasks mechanism. So that when one asynchronous background task completes, for example, uploading a video to YouTube, then the next task should be kicked off, which would be to take that video and add it to the appropriate playlist. So um, that should have been happening. And the reason it wasn't, uh, I discovered once I actually looked at the, the um, logs tracing and uh the issue was that if i look at my playlists there's a setting on playlists uh the video sort order and so for the api to work and be able to manually set the ordering which is what i'm trying to do uh this needs to be set to manually ordered mainly sorted in youtube alternatively i could not provide an order value in the API call and instead have this set to, uh, I don't know, date added or date published or something, uh, which would also work at least for this because the published order should be the order of the episodes. But uh, this is fine. Once I change that setting, uh, that seemed to make it work. And um, it seems to mostly be working. So of the several videos I've uploaded, uh, since then, through Glowing Telegram, um, it has successfully uh, associated the playlist to about half of them. I'm not sure why the other half are failing, but that doesn't really have anything to do with the, um, the task chaining logic. That's probably... Um, uh, maybe I hit a quota or something else, something I need to dig into. But... Um, the infrastructure for the chain tasks seems to be working. And so for now, I'm going to say that's good enough. I have to go and look at the videos anyway to add the uh, end screen and do some other stuff that you can't automate through the YouTube API. Um, so I can always, it's, it's very easy to see in YouTube Studio if it's associated to playlist. Um, so 
the next thing uh, on the project board is use chain tasks to mark episodes after upload to YouTube. So what does that mean? Well, in the glowing telegram UI, if we look at an episode, there's this field called is published. Um, and what I've been doing is I've been going through and, and changing that to yes, once the video is on YouTube, not when it's actually like live and visible, but just when it's transferred to YouTube. So I think what I want to do, um, and maybe I've captured that in here, is probably change around how some of that works, right? So add a field in the episode record for the YouTube video ID, right? So we're going to, uh, the idea being that once the video is uploaded to YouTube, I'm going to save back the ID of the video back to the record. So I'll, like link those together. Um, I, I say remove is published here. But I think I'm I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna leave this field, but I'm gonna add a new field um, alongside of it. And the reason for that is I think I might at some point want to track the actual is the video public or not. And we can use that field for that, and that uh, will be convenient because all those videos that I said is published. You know, within a few days, all the existing ones will be published. Um, since I don't have a mechanism to currently set that to is published when the video go li goes live on YouTube, uh, that will become stale shortly, but I'll, I'll have to go back and fix it. If I decide to do that, I just don't want to, I'm not going to remove the, not going to remove the field for now. I'm just going to add new field um, I'll probably just call it YouTube video ID I think so uh, let's see update playlist task response and mirror that right so each task in the chain like that the, the code that does the work needs to return a payload to be passed on to the next task um, And then add chain task call to episode update endpoint. Um, oh, add, uh, sorry. Add chain task to call episode update endpoint. So we need, uh, we have our upload, we have our associate to playlist. And then the third thing will be to call the endpoint to update the episode record um, with the video ID. Now, this could potentially be interesting. I think we may have to extend how the um, mechanism works, how we describe how to call the uh, API endpoint, because I suspect that the shape of the payload that the task worker will provide will not be compatible with the uh, input for the upload uh, update uh, episode endpoint. Now I can make a, another separate endpoint for this. Um, but I think it might be worth exploring the idea of maybe thinking of a kind of a general purpose way to um, in the shape of the task to say, here's how you need to structure the payload when you're calling the API endpoint for the task. That that feels kind of vague. I think that'll make more sense once we get into the code. Um, so that is probably enough talking uh, for now uh, about like hypotheticals. What about actually getting getting into this? So um, to add a field in the episode, uh, let's see, we have we have an open issue for this. Let me get over here and we will Hey, brainless. Morning, yellow. <laughs> uh, this is issue number 136. So we'll branch out of that. How is it going? Um, so things we need to do to add the field in the episode record. Um, we're going to need a schema migration to add the column. Going to need uh, to update to, uh, 
um, Strux probably just waking up, but doing well. How am I? I'm uh, doing all right, you know. Um, I I sl started slightly later than scheduled, <laughs> uh, as I uh, I got my coffee and I started sipping it and realized, hey, you know, I'm gonna need like uh, I mean. The uh, advice I've received from various sources is uh, you should, uh, you know, if you drink anything acidic, you know, coffee or whatever, uh, rinse your mouth out and wait 15 minutes before brushing. Uh, so anyway, this whole Invisalign thing, right, is just the added, several added chores. And one of them is in the morning after coffee, I get, I get to drink coffee faster. I gotta, because you, um, you know, I take my Invisalign out for for meals um, or hot beverages or anything like that. Uh, and then you got to brush before you put them back in. You also have to, like, clean the trays. It's a whole thing. Um, so, yeah, just a little pinch for time um, for this arbitrary time that I set for the stream to start. Uh, okay, so how do we how do we do a schema migration? I think we just need to... Uh, I think I have a VS Code task to create a um, migration, migration generate. So this is gonna be, um, I forget if I need spaces or underscores in the name or how it's gonna handle the, the, the name of the, the migration. So let's just do like add YouTube video ID to episodes. API um, and I mean that doesn't do honestly a whole, a whole lot it creates a folder and it creates a, a couple of files but it does you know put the date and time and the name of the file name of the folder uh, Brainless says I will be lurking I gifted mind over magic to a friend streamer and he's doing his first playthrough now nice <laughs> uh, yeah, it's unfortunate I was not able to do the stream on, on Friday. Um, but I needed more Invisalign stuff, right? So I had a couple of the the, the attachments they glued onto my... Yeah, you noticed. Uh, a couple of the attachments they glue onto my teeth um, for the Invisalign. A couple of them came off. And uh, apparently they want those on. <laughs> so I had to go back in uh, for a... Uh, 5 p.m. appointment on a Friday to uh, to get them back on. Now, actually, it didn't hurt uh, them coming off. Um, uh, actually, uh, and they don't hurt going on either. But uh, yeah, not a big deal. Just annoying because the dentist that I go to is uh, uh, it's it's a little ways away. <laughs> like. Um, that ended up being like four hours to uh, for the whole for the whole thing, just with all the travel. All right, so uh, this should be really simple, right? Because we should just alter table episodes, add column, YouTube video ID. Um, and I've decided that um, unless I have some specific requirement, I'm probably probably just going to use a text field, a text uh, column type columns uh, and then the reverse is just alter table drop column YouTube video ID so it, it didn't even occur to me at the moment when I scheduled the, that appointment that uh, uh, that was gonna conflict I was just thinking it was very convenient for me um, um, a work hour timing perspective because uh, most of the people I work with are like Central and Eastern time, so my, my day kind of ends uh, a little earlier in the day being uh, on the West Coast. So, um, it was convenient in that respect, but then uh, I, I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to get in there as soon as that was the earliest available time. Uh, so that's how it goes. All right, so we have our, our, our 
migration. Uh, there's something else that it does. Um, does it update models automatically? Can't, can it? No, of course not. Um, add a hub. Hey, dang newbie. Welcome in. Uh, let's see, we're calling this. Uh, well, I could probably just copy it from the other place. YouTube video ID. Uh, and this is a option string, right? Because we didn't. Um, in fact, this could be a little bit more explicit here. We can just do this, right? We can say it is nullable. Technically not required. Like if we wanted to say you had to have this video ID, we would say not null. But um, explicitly it's a nullable column, uh, which is good because there are a bunch of records in there that don't have it. So uh, if we said not null, then I have to provide a default as well. All right, so it's an optional string on the episode. And then in schema.rs generated automatically by diesel CLI is it all right if we um how does this work is there a diesel uh migration run there we go And that automatically updated schema.rs. That's the part that uh, automatically updates. How's your uh, Sunday morning going, uh, dang newbie? Is there is there a? Are you okay with me refer like uh, saying dang newbie is the a kind of means of address or uh, uh, dang or newbie <laughs> or some other? Uh, uh, way of addressing it. Let me know what your preference is. Uh, and what is this complaining about? Cannot find type. It's odd. Episode here uh not bad been good so far worked in the garden made breakfast nice newbie is just fine all right <laughs> your mom calls calls you dang newbie uh all right maybe so why can i find type youtube video id module great schema episodes so here's episodes here is YouTube video ID. Um, oh, this is this is not a real issue. So this is um, like if I were to click this, maybe. Ah, uh, okay. I don't know then. That's odd. I thought maybe this was something where the issue is actually in a different file. And um, this is just like referring to this call, uh, the, this, this field in the struct. I'm not sure why it's complaining like this because this is here. Uh, let's just keep moving on and maybe it'll resolve itself, right? So uh, see, there's a bunch of errors because now there's this new field in um, the episode struct that is not being handled. So uh, let's see. Like, uh, here's an example, right? Where this is like, we don't need to change anything here. Uh, exactly. We do need to do something for this to type check, you know, to be valid again. Um, and these, her the these errors are hard to like, really look from, like looking at this, it's hard to, 
to, to know what the problem is. Um, but I know that if I'm getting this this error here and, and here, there's something uh, it doesn't like. Oh, it's thinking again. Okay, I think we caught up. Cool. Flippy ran. Uh, okay, so I think that was that was ultimately the issue was that this was confused because it was operating off of stale information from this file. Yeah. Good. There should still be something that we need to update though. Um, maybe instructs here. So we probably want the ability uh, in create episode request and um, update episode request to provide the um, YouTube video ID. Like that. Um, of course, again, optionally, optionally. Then update episode change set. So this represents, unlike these structs that represent how we are, um, these structs represent like stuff coming from the um, from the front end to the API. Uh, whereas this struct represents how we're building a set of things to change in the database. Yeah, there we go. And then. Um, save that then we can see that there is at least, at least one error here so this is how do we convert the api struct so the request to update an episode into the change set going back to the database um, and this should be really really straightforward it should just be that we pass through the uh, optional string here um and we, we never read this anywhere um, because, let's see. Uh, episode detail view should also have the, uh, the YouTube video ID. Yep. And um, should the simple view have the YouTube video ID? Probably. So the simple view is what we use when we're looking at the list of items. So this this view um, calls the the list API endpoint for episodes, and that uses the simple view uh, struct. And I probably want Actually, I don't think I do. I think I will likely want to be able to filter based on whether that field is populated or not, whether it's null, null or not. But I don't think I need the YouTube ID in this list, uh, in that list view. So I'm gonna leave that as is. I'm not gonna change episode simple view. Um, okay. So then for episode detail view, we have this implementation of the from trait. So let's say how to take an episode and convert it into this view. Uh, and so then this again, it's just pass through the, the YouTube video ID from the episode um, to it. That's just really straightforward wiring. Now in get list, we want to change some things here because in our, our list of things to do, um, I don't really break this out too much, but implicit in this the statement update front ends use the field um, and add the field is that I want to be able to filter. I want to be able to filter on this field. So uh, the way I have implemented this handler for get list is that I have a create predicate function down here at the bottom that takes some JSON that represents the filter. And then we just have a bunch of conditions here, right? So we have like all logic to build the filter for the is published field. 
Series ID, stream ID, stream name. So we'll add another one. Uh, YouTube video ID filter. Uh, does that type look right? Box of a dying boxable expression episodes. Yeah, I think that, that should be the same for all of them. Now, if, so if we have a YouTube video ID in the filter um, JSON object, hey, for the follow. Wilson just followed. Uh, Ilsamel, Ilsamel. <laughs> Let me know if you have a pre preferred way that's pronounced. Um, so, uh, how do I want this to work? I think, I think what I want to do is I actually want to say, um, I have some logic in here because what I want to do is I don't want to actually filter based on, I, so I'm, I'm going to assume that this filter will not be, I won't want to provide the video ID. Like, how would I have that? Why would I do that? I probably want this to be something like, um, actually, I'm gonna change this to be the, the name of the, like the filter um, key will be has YouTube video ID. And then what I'll do here is, yeah, I could do that. So if Q is true, then the, the thing that I'm gonna box up and provide is gonna be a condition that the YouTube video ID is not null, and otherwise it is null. Um, and if I don't provide has YouTube video ID, at it, so it's not in here, then it's none, and then I have a um, an always true expression. This ID will never be equal to uh, no, uh, which is what I'm doing everywhere. This is just kind of like a, here, here's a, here's a always true statement. Uh, and then all I have to do is just add that on to my list of, uh, conditions. So I'm just combining all those conditions together, which is why I need this always true expression. So if you don't provide any filters, then all of these uh, if you don't if you don't provide filter parameters, I should say, then all of these filter uh, variables end up containing a box with a uh, uh, a, a truthy uh, condition. And if you add all of those truthy conditions together, you just get all the records. Um, maybe there's a uh, a way to do this that ends up being more like concise. Uh, if we cared about the number of characters we're sending in this query that ends up going to the database, but I think that's, this is fine. So this will give me the ability to filter in the uh, front end for episodes that have a YouTube video ID. Either they do or they don't, or I don't care. So that kind of a uh, ternary condition. Am I using that word right? A trinary condition? Hmm. Okay, so add field and episode record for YouTube video ID and location. So I think this does that, right? Because by updating the struct and saying how we go from the input struct into the change set, um, struct and how we go from the episode record, which is, you know, from the database back to the view that, you know, covers everything. And then the actual, like get list is the exception because we have to have filtering logic there, but like create and create bulk. Uh, oh, there are, there are things that we need to do here as well that unfortunately do not, um, give any kind of type error when we start changing things. Uh, so in here, ah, what I probably, what I could consider doing here is, uh, 
Um, maybe there's something I could, like some from trait that I could implement for building this from a create episode request. I wonder. So this is just going to um, take the YouTube video ID from the body, which will either be none or it will be some string, uh, and it will set the, the column in the record that it's inserting to be that as well. So that's that. Uh, almost missed that. Delete, we don't need to do anything special because we're not, you know, we don't care about the other columns, just the ID here. Create bulk. Um, do need to um, add. Oh, interesting. You could probably be, probably be uh, populating these. So this is something that I've not been updating, right? Um, hmm. Hmm. So what is the type that this returns? See that? Insert into values, right? So it's this type U, it's an insertable of T. Incomplete insert statement T op. So like in um, TypeScript, maybe this sort of thing, I, I how would I, hmm. so this is a vector of free episode request. What if, Ooh, um, can I learn what this is by doing something like this and then saying let x equals that? Can you tell me what x is? Okay, it's a vector of some kind of tuple with things in it. There a way to expand this type? No. How's the rest going? Hey, uh, caffeine compiler. It's it's going all right. Um, I'm wondering right here. Basically, I have two places where um, I would like to consolidate. Like I'm 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 doing the same thing, and I've already realized. That, yeah, I have things here that I probably uh, have missed in the past. Uh, like these should be identical. So why don't I move this uh, somewhere else? And I'm trying to figure out, so like in, um, uh, let's see, where's an example of that? I have some places where I am oh, here we go. So like if I have this update episode request, so this is modeling the request coming into the API, I have this uh, implementation of the from trait to say how to build an update episode change set. I guess the question is, wait, well, hold on. This is my type, right? Yeah. Is there something like as change set for um, inserting? Or can you use that for the same purpose? Hmm. So going all right. Just uh, realizing there, there's something that I've missed, and uh, trying to see if I can learn something about that. Uh, how to do it better? Hmm. Let's see. Um. I go over here. 
So it says that you should be, uh, I have no clue, three weeks in, into Rust right now. Uh, all right. <laughs> well, we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. Have you, uh, how are you liking Rust three weeks in? I think the first time I learned, tried to learn Rust was um, quite a number of years ago now. And I've been getting back to it over the course of the last uh, eight or nine nine months, I guess now. <laughs> Love it, great. Yeah, it's a, it's got some, some, some nice things. I think in terms of, um, I mean, my go-to language right now is TypeScript just because I've been using it a lot. Yeah, I have to, I have to fight with a borrow checker, yeah. Um, it's it's there to protect you. You just gotta learn how to under, <laughs> you learn how it's trying to communicate to you. But there is a way. Um, so insert statement. Huh? Fully constructed insert statement. Target records. So records is this. Not values. So insertable of type T. Is T representing here? It's like a query source. Using uh, copy and write more for it now. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've actually used that um, uh, that in any any Rust code that I've written, but I have seen it once or twice. I'm assuming that's what that stands for. See a cow? Copy and write. All right, so what is a query source? It represents a type which can appear in the from clause. Apps should not need to determine themselves with a straight. Yeah, copy and write, great. Um, so, can I implement I guess I would be implementing from, let's see. I probably don't have anything, oops. Probably don't have anything that's implementing anything related to well, create episode request or create episode request. Right, let's try doing that. Um. So, I wonder, so what is this as change set, documentation about what this is all about, implements as change set. Uh, expression. Viable. I might just need to ooh, insertable. So there's a as insertable. Let's try that. So I create a uh, pub struct. It's going to be create create episode. Um, Insertable. Oh yeah, this, this one over here, <laughs> right? I mean, honestly, what I should be doing is I should just be going over to the uh, the the diesel uh, docs, right? But uh, that's fine. Okay, so I think I need to drive something, something like that. Then I'm gonna guess I need to do something like this. Do we think this is going to work? Probably need to import it. Um, yeah, Copilot was wrong about that. That autocomplete for that line. This needs to be like this. Okay, it doesn't hate it. 
Um, and I think this is what I want. The title, description, thumbnail, URL. It basically mirrors the create episode request. Um, I guess the question here is, could create episode requests also be insertable? Oh, here we go. I can read it in a, in a nicer format. To implement insertable, this drive needs to know the corresponding table type. In the case, type name with added S from the current scope. It's possible to change this. Okay. Struct can also contain fields which implement insertable. You want to have one field map to more than one column. Oh. Table name, field attributes, example. Drive insertable partial equal debug. Table name insertable user. And you can pass, insert, uh, you know, a insertable user to insert into values. So this is what I'm trying to do. So the question is, do I even need, like, if I have a create episode request, can't I just do this? And because otherwise it's just kind of duplicating and this is what I'm trying to avoid. I'm trying to avoid duplicating stuff that's going to result in me forgetting to update things. Oh, I don't like that. I, um, spec, tract, expression, I see. Oh, right. Okay. This, so this would be why? Can we... Uh, let's read the docs again. Field attributes, column, embed, serialize as. Can we do this? I mean, that's wrong. Uh, ever considered Vim actions? What are, uh, what exactly is that referring to? Vim actions. Bomb actions? You know, in a couple of years, I'm going to get really good at this keyboard. Oh, uh, oh, oh, right. Um, yeah, I used to use Vim quite a lot about yeah uh this is this is before neovim was a thing um <laughs> and, and but then uh a couple of jobs ago basically the whole team uh, adopted vs code and i figured i'd give it a try um and i kind of stuck with it since and for a while i did like have the vim extension stuff so you could do like uh various command macro things inside of VS Code, and I just kind of stopped using it over time. Um, let's see, is that right? No. Not like that. Let's go to the docs here again. Same time. I see, that's interesting. Yeah, there, uh, I don't, I don't know if it's if it's still a thing. Uh, there you go. Um, maybe this one. Vim emulation for VS Code. Of course, I, I don't know even the standard uh, Standard home row direction keys for Vim no longer work for me. Um, I guess, I don't know if that's really legible what the keys actually are on this keyboard, but uh, you know, I have K-N-E-I-O over here. Yeah, H-J-K-L. So H is here, J is there, K and L. So it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't work exactly the same on this Colmac layout. Um, so what 
this the type here? It's definitely not this string. Yeah. Yeah, I decided not only would I, you know, pay several hundred dollars for this uh, Moonlander, uh, ZSA Moonlander keyboard, but I would just, you know, do a different key layout while I'm at it. Uh, <laughs> so we have, we have uh, QWFPB, ARSTG, you know, it's pretty close. Like Q and W are the same. S is slightly shifted. Um, you know, so some of the keys are the same. And then, uh, yeah, so J L U Y K N E I O M A uh, uh, M and H. Yeah. And then uh, escape and uh, space and enter on the thumbs and bunch of overlays it's a whole thing uh so how do we actually serialize this it's not um let's see tracks is here we go here's the type let me do that now oh, that bracket doesn't need to be there other way around Okay, it's thinking. Clippy is running. Okay, it doesn't hate it. <laughs> uh, well, I guess it still does. What's from? Uh, da, 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 the straight bound, ST option, option, surrey JSON, value. Not satisfied. Okay. Um,. It's actually that way. I guess in the create episode request, this is not optional. You have to provide the tracks. Still doesn't like it though. Uh, Sorted JSON value from track is not satisfied. Don't we, I did serializable. I guess that's not enough. So, let's keep reading. Uh, let's see, diesel, column name, diesel embed, serialize as. Instead of serializing the actual field type, diesel will convert the field into some type using into. So we serialize that instead. Uh, by default, this derive will serialize directly using the Okay, I don't think I need that anyway. They're using serialize as with uppercase string and uppercase string is this. Uh... Okay, interesting. Huh. So if I remove this. I mean, that breaks other things, but at least that, that it's happy with that. So I just need to figure out how to tell it how to handle this vector of track. No. Good job. Um, it was not successful. <laughs> um, hmm. Straight bound std vec vec handlers episode structs track uh, is not a diesel expression, right? So it understands we're trying to get to JSONB. Right, the underlying column uh, for tracks is the JSONB column. So how can I tell it to just convert it? Uh,
when I implemented update episode request for episode update episode change set, um, change set here has tracks. Oh, I mainly, okay, I'm telling it how to convert the optional. Well, it's optional. Hmm. Well, the other thing I can do is go back to the thing I was going to do before, where we'd have a separate struct like this. And then the tracks here would look like this. And that, well, let's wait for Clippy to do its thing. We'll see if it's acceptable. Okay. Um, then I just need to implement a thing that converts the create episode request into a create episode insertable. Oh, should have just wait a second. Okay, so from create episode request for create episode insertable, do the thing. Um, cannot find, oh weird, now we can import that. Okay. And, uh, what's it complaining about? Use of unwrap or to construct default value. What is this wrap or default? So we have Clippy Lens now. Uh, checks for usage is the following functions. Loud right now. Let's turn that down. Uh, checks for usage is the following functions with an argument that constructs a default value. Unwrap or, unwrap or else, or insert or insert with. Readability using unwrap or default in place of unwrap or. Etc. Simpler and more concise. Wrap or default. Well, that's interesting because I mean, we are passing something into the argument. I'm not use. I'm not passing default. new. I guess uh, the empty vector is kind of in the same vein as this. Okay. Or default. Does that actually work though? Or is this a... Uh... Cool. Alright. Made the lint. Uh, the lint are happy. Okay. So all of this is just to be able to go over to create and instead of doing all this uh, hmm. So one thing we do need to carry over is the default category stuff. I want to keep that. Oh, it has it. Copilot and <laughs> Copilot did that for me. All right, cool. So uh, what we can do instead is get rid of all of this and say um, uh, episode. What do we, oh, it's body. Body dot into. No, didn't like it. It is a create episode request. Uh, into should leverage that from trait. Um, we need to tell it what it is though. I definitely don't want to do that. <laughs> Uh, so this would be a, a thing that I will have to import. Does that work? Is 
that acceptable? It seems like so. All right. So that I could carry over to other places as well. I think I'll have to do something slightly different for create bulk uh, here. Actually, no, no, no. I'll be able to do the same thing here where I do like um, episode into. This is going to complain about some type issues, but uh, I got to take a break. Because it's been an hour, one. Uh, two, because Switch is going to want to run ads. So if you can stick around, maybe take a break as well uh, while Twitch does some ads. I'm going to go walk around the house, get some more some more water, and I'll be back in just a few minutes. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll keep on fixing things. BRB. Trade is derived. It will assume that all fields are going to struct matches all the fields in the query. 